Well, here we go again. Uh, what you're looking at there is a John Deere Model 51, uh, single bottom, pull tight plow. Uh, it's missing the bottom, or missing the plow, missing the mold board, whatever the hell you want to call it. It's missing the stuff that goes down in the dirt. So, other than that, it don't look too bad. It's bent up a little bit. That's no nothing major there. Uh, it's got some wires and shit hanging off of it. It's missing the connecting linkage on this handle. No big deal. We can make one of them up. This one has the exposed clutch. So through the very limited research that I did online, what very limited amount of information there is online about these old things, the exposed clutch, look at that. See how it's got the lobes out on the outside? You can see the lobes. It's different than an enclosed clutch. You can't see the lobes on the working mechanism. The rod goes into that clutch casing. The exposed clutches are supposed to be early models. We're gonna see if I can unbolt that whole mechanism and bolt it up there. These are similar plows to give you an idea how similar they are. So anyhow, that's a beam number 612, beam number 613, beam number 614. So they're very, very close in numbers. Model 52, model 51, 612, 613, 614. I'm hoping I can just unbolt that whole assembly and bolt it on there and more or less be done with that. I don't think penetrating fluids are are gonna do it. So uh, I'm just gonna use a little bit of heat on the nut. The whole idea when you're heating something up, the whole idea is to break the rust bond uh, on the fastener. So like, I'm gonna heat up the nut and bolt here, and I just wanna get it hot, get it like orange hot, and then let it cool. And nine times out of 10, after you let it cool, they, they break pretty easy. You, just, you heat it up and everything expands and kind of breaks that bond. And then once you let it cool back down, everything shrinks back up to where it should be. It may be softer than it was to begin with. You may have, you know, if there was any kind of heat treat to it, you might have messed that up. But, you know, I'm not really worried about that a whole lot. Well, here's a uh, PPE tip for you. Even if you think you're only going to be a second with that torch, put the goggles on. I can't hardly see shit now. Well, much as I like to say about hardware, uh, I've been beating on this thing for 15 minutes and I can't get these bolts. I got both the nuts loosened up and there's a little bolt here. I got the nut off it too. I can't get the bolts pull out of the beam, and rather than keep beating and, and maybe do damage to the tailwheel, I'm going to sacrifice the hardware. So I'm just going to try to cut them heads off without damaging the tailwheel now. Well, we got it off of there. Um, that was a couple nights ago. My uh, battery died on my phone, so I couldn't couldn't continue to record. But cutting the uh, bolts off of there was the ticket. I did not damage the mount, so I'm really happy with how that turned out. And now I'm uh, starting to loosen the bolts on this plow bottom. That one there has been welded uh, about three different places that I could see pretty quick. So I really don't want to use that. That plow, I think I want to use this one. I can't see any welds on it. So I'm going to loosen up the bolts there and catch you guys up in a bit. Well, I'm running into the same problem on this one that I ran into on that one. And that is, I got the nuts broke loose, but they are just so very well rusted in this, uh, you know, somewhere in the middle here. They're sticking really bad. I'm beating on them with a crowbar and a hammer, and I'm afraid what's going to happen is I'm going to slip and I'm going to break one of these... Uh, 
these fins here, which will completely defeat the purpose of taking this, this uh, using this side. So I think I'm gonna get the uh, torch out. I'm gonna torch off these bottom two. Those, th that is a bolt that used to have a nut on it, either one of them. Um, the top one there, there's very little left of the nut. The bottom one, it's got about a half of a nut left on it. It's pretty poor uh, condition. I'm gonna torch those off on this side. And these bolts here, I might try to torch those off on this side. Um, and the reason I'm gonna do these on this side should free up this pretty easily because they're stuck in the middle. I would like to torch these bottom two off over here on this side, but I can't see anything over here. So I'm gonna get the torch out, whack the heads off of these two big bolts here and whack the nuts off on the bottom two there and see if I can do some tapping up here gently and uh, try not to break anything. See if I can get this thing off there. Kind of precariously uh, jacked up there. Drop nothing on myself here. All right, well, you can see I got it up on the bench. I did just a little bit of damage with the torch. I was trying to be careful, but that's uh, something you just got to watch out for whenever you're playing with a torch. Um, so this this is not terrible. Um, the uh, Those two bolts that were on the bottom that I cut off from the backside, they do have a head sticking through here. It's just flush with whatever this is. I probably should have said it if I didn't already, guys, at the beginning of this. It's been a few days ago since I started this video. I am no kind of mechanic. I'm no kind of plow specialist, no kind of John Deere, nothing. I'm no expert at anything. This is just me doing, you know, tinkering out in the garage. That's all this is. This is just tinkering. You know, that's the name of the channel. I'm just tinkering with shit. I'm no expert at nothing. And uh, if I can help you guys, you know, you see what I'm doing and maybe I serve as an example of what not to do, that's, that's great, you know. The more information you can gather when you're going into a project, the better off you're going to be. So I don't know what to call this stuff. You know, there's a zillion names for different parts of these plows. I'm not even going to pretend to know. Um, so anyhow, I'm thinking if I knock these bolts out of here, this whole plate will come off. Um, and I don't necessarily want it off, but I'm going to go ahead and I got to knock the bolts out. Anyhow, I got to get new bolts and, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do to replace these with. Anyhow, I'll knock this plate off of here and then we can get back in there and, and kind of clean up behind this too because I, the more I think about it, I'm going to clean this plow up. I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to fix it up, redo that clutch, and uh, I'm probably going to keep this thing. So um, after inspecting it, you know, getting it off and looking at it, you can see just how old and rusty this thing is. You know, that started out as a square nut there. Um, that would have been a square nut and there's like nearly nothing left of that there would have been nuts on here that's an end of a bolt that's completely rotted away no nut and barely the end of the bolt sticking out same thing there um, this would have been looks like that's an adjuster so uh, there would have been another one on here probably and uh, well maybe not no maybe that's just a a bolt with a uh, washer because there would have been nothing to adjust against so I'll have to replace that, but you can just see how how pitted and rotted and rusty all this stuff is. I'm not gonna go bananas with this. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. Anything that looks like it, you know, is falling apart, falling out, I'll replace, but um, otherwise, you know, like shit like that, that's fine. I'm gonna leave that alone. I'll clean it up, but I'm gonna paint over it. And, uh, you know, I guess that kind of leads into another thing. You know, you hear guys talk about they restored something. Oh. So-and-so restored that engine last night. Last night, he restored something in a night? Oh, yeah, man, it just it looks great now. Well, it freaking restoration in a can, you know? Um, I saw another video of a guy, one of the very few other pictures or videos that I could find of a Model 51 is a guy, a YouTuber, that, you know, the, the title was re Restoring a John Deere Plow or something like that. He did nothing but paint the thing. He painted it with a brush. He got green paint splattered where it shouldn't have been. But his title was restoring. That ain't restoring. That's just painting the damn thing. So I'm not claiming to restore this plow. I'm just going to kind of fix it up and give it a paint job. So 
that's that's my whole uh, take on all that so I'm not going to restore it. I'm not going to, you know, nut and bolt and, and make it back like it was factory. It's going to be old. There's going to be some worn out parts on here. Um, but hopefully it'll work when I get done with it. I, maybe I want to use it. And uh, it, I, it definitely will look better when I'm done. So I wouldn't call this restoration. Just fixing it up. Tinkering. That's what we're doing here. We're tinkering. All right. So it's pretty interesting. Um, See that the head of this thing, this is the bolt to come out of here. It's got just a little groove on it, and there's a notch in that plate, so that's what keeps it from spinning. So I guess it had a flat head. And uh, the best thing that I'm that I'm thinking to do with these is to cut that head off and weld a new bolt on. So you can see I pulled these two out here. Uh, the this one back here, I hold that support rod on. Um, it was the support rod was wiggling, so I kind of. Tap the plate up. It's actually being held in by another one down here. I don't know if I want to fight that or not. Um, but I pulled that one out, and that's going to be kind of my test uh, test subject here. So I cut the head off of a good bolt, and I cut the the shank off of that bad head. I've just welded it up, so it's hot, and I don't want to cool it and make it brittle. Um, but I'm going to let that cool back down and uh, grind that down smooth, and uh, we'll see if that'll work to replace these because. I guess you could maybe find these somewhere, but uh, I don't know. Well, that thing sure made a mess on the bench. Uh, I've got it as cleaned up as it's going to get for the most part. I did, uh, I snagged that bolt and that uh, had an odd fastener, an odd shaped, big thick kind of a concave washer on there. I snagged that off that other plow too. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna put it on here. I don't have these bolts done yet. Uh, let's see that one that I welded the head on. You can see that sticking up down there. Looks very much out of place, but it works very well. So um, the head, is, again, is flush, sits back behind this plate. I don't think that plate's probably supposed to be bent like that. That one over there is the same way. Um, I would say that plate's probably supposed to be flat. So maybe when I get it up there, I'll see what I can do to get that a uh, little better fit there. But I'm going to go ahead and stick it on there now and uh, uh, temporarily bolt it. I don't have, I don't think I have carriage bolts big enough to do this yet. Uh, but I'm going to bolt it on there temporarily with some hex head bolts so that I can um, figure out how long these bolts need to be. And I go ahead and get them on there. And I'm still, still cross fingers that that's even going to be the same bolt pattern. So we're going to find out here real quick. So we got the... Uh, the bottom mounted and a tail wheel on there and now you can see how good that tail wheel spinning uh, I've moved my attention now to this coulter there was like a, a mount here for a cleaner for the coulter I don't know what you call it exactly but it would have been a little blade that would make sure the coulter stayed clean I took that mount off and I have removed the coulter I don't know if I want to disassemble it completely or not but I do want to get it freed up so um, I've been using a torch a lot on this thing and you know this old iron been sitting around pretty rusty and for you guys that don't know if you got old rusty sticky stuff hit it with a torch get it glowing orange well not glowing orange but get it orange and then let it cool down walk away from it for a few minutes and then when you come back you can put a wrench on it and it'll break right loose normally so um, I got the torch out there right now you can see I've removed that other arm i don't know what manufacturer that was but it was different so i'm gonna snag the arm off of that one and you know i've got the torch out here because i was out here heating these bolts up a few minutes ago and you can see how they're discolored now this one and that one there and they're yeah they're cooling down pretty good so i'll be able to come out here and just a little bit put a wrench on them they should break right loose and i think that way Let's see, I'll take this arm off of here, and then I'll snag this linkage off with it, too. So I'll get the handle, the linkage, and the arm in one shot there. I kind of was looking at the wheel. Um, that drive wheel on that side doesn't have any traction on it. And I don't know what you call these little traction bars here, but I thought, well, I could take each one off individually, or I may, take, I may be able to take that wheel off. You can see it's got a, a, like three bolts holding the hub together. This one is a very similar looking wheel, 
but the fastening system is different. And I wonder if there isn't supposed to be a cap that threads on here. I bet you there is. So um, that may be something I end up having to round up. I bet you there's a cap supposed to thread on there. Yep, I'll bet you it looks. I'll bet you it looks a lot like that. So maybe that's something I'm missing. Um, that's what I'm working on right now. Well, now what I'm working on is these uh, arms. Uh, got this one mounted up and it looks really good. I straightened out the rod, just uh, disconnected it, pounded it flat on the anvil over there. Uh, I'm working on this other rod here and it had a, had a bend and a twist. It was kind of funny. Uh, it actually had a couple of different bends in it. So I had to disconnect the thing, take the, the upper half over, straighten it out too. Um, Again, that linkage rod, I straightened it all out, and when I, uh, this, this down here had a bend in it too, and when I was uh, trying to straighten that bend out, I was beating on it with a hammer down here, and I cracked it. So right here, you can see where I've got it uh, cut in with a grinder. I kind of notched it, and uh, I'll be honest with you, this will be the second time I've had to weld this. So the first time, I just butted it up, and uh, I thought, well, I'll just kind of try to burn it in there as good as I could. I burned it in there and uh, came back with my grinder and I ground, it, ground all the weld off, ground it all flush. I gave it just a couple more love taps down here. And, or I pulled on it with, uh, you can see my lever and my pipe wrench. Pulled on it and it popped that weld. So I ground, now I've ground a V, more or less, into the metal. And I'm going to go ahead and weld it, fill that up, and then grind it all flush. So uh, that should be a good repair then. And uh, after that, I'll hook the linkages up on the arms here and uh, see what else I can get into on this thing. All right, so uh, I got in this wheel to just clean it up. It, it spun real good and everything, um, but I got in it to uh, just make sure everything was good in there. Uh, put a new grease fitting on the back, grease it up. It spun real good. Um, to get this wheel off, you take this set screw out. That's just a bolt. Um, you unthread it, take it off the, the this hub cap here, and then you put a wrench on the end of the hub cap, and you unthread the hub cap, and then there's a uh, there's like a pin with a uh, it holds like a locking ring on. Pull the pin out, locking ring comes off, and the wheel comes off then. I uh, was putting it all back together and tightening up this, you know, had it all back together, tighten up that little set screw, put a little bit too much torque on it, and I don't know how well you can see it or not, but I heard tink. Well, that was me cracking that hubcap, so looks like I need uh, two hubcaps now. All right, so I'm over here on uh, the drive wheel or the clutch wheel or whatever, and this darn thing just won't engage like this should be engaging this mechanism somehow so um, the trip lever handle seems pretty basic it's on a spring it's all external so uh, pretty easy to deal with there now what I've done already is again I'm sure I'm missing a cap that screws on here you know you can see this is threads um, so I'm thinking that this band probably, you can see that discoloration, I heated that, that bolt up just a little bit ago, so it's still really hot. Um, I'm gonna take that band off, and that should allow the rim to come off this hub. Now, you'll notice there's a hole there. There should be, similar to the other side, there should be, I would, I'm guessing, um, like an indexing collar with staggered uh, grooves and a pin. Um, that's missing here. So there was a uh, there was a bolt jammed through here and it was bent and I had to heat it up as well and beat it out. So once I beat that bolt out now the the whole wheel hub and everything is loose on here. I'm gonna try to do this one hand without breaking anything. So that whole hub assembly comes off. You can look at the back side there and see it's, uh, you know, those notches are supposed to engage that little roller there, I guess. And this thing is stuck. So that's why that wheel is just free spinning all the time. Um, 
the spring in here looks really rusty. I'm going to go ahead and replace that too. I'm going to replace both these springs. Um, but this bolt back here looks like looks like it fastens to here, so this mechanism is stuck. So uh, this should pull off of here. If I pull that handle. Okay, so I pulled the handle up just enough to, to clear this off of here. Um, this whole thing comes off the axle then. You see it's got a big keyway. That's the key in there. So I'll put this mechanism up on the bench. Looks like it should pivot on that bolt there. And I'll have to break that nut loose there. and We'll get this thing freed up. Now that axle should... That should probably also come out. Um, there's a grease fitting there. Looks pretty good shape. So uh, I'll work on that too. Well, you can see I went ahead and popped the axle out of there just to kind of get a good look at how the, uh, how the end is worn. It's not bad at all. I'm real happy with that. That's where it wears against and uh, that's in pretty good shape too. So I went ahead and uh, I popped that grease fitting out of there. I don't know if you can see it. There was a grease fitting right there. Went ahead and popped that out while I've got access in here and then pushed a slug of crap out so that uh, now I'll stick a new grease fitting in there and I'll be able to very easily grease that axle. Uh, also been working on this, uh, this, I guess this is the biggest part of the clutch mechanism and I got it all freed up. So um, not a whole lot really kind of simple with this thing. Uh, it's riveted. You know, pivots on that rivet. This is a bolt that goes through and connects the two, and it also limits the amount of travel here. There's a slot, so um, I'm still not entirely certain how this mechanism all works together to, you know, raise and lower the plier, but we'll we'll find out here. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick a new uh, grease fitting in there and uh, kind of reassemble this stuff, and uh, we'll go from there. Well, it's getting hard to see out here, but. I was able to get all those little traction bars off of there using the torch. I heated up the nut and bolt and then just let it cool. And actually, I was able to get all the nuts broke off. So um, I put all the traction bars on this wheel. Um, I don't know how many different size wheels there are, um, but I took all the traction pieces off of that wheel out there and I ended up with an extra and that one out there was even missing one. So. I'm kind of glad I wasn't able to swap wheels because I bet you it's a different diameter. Well, you can see I got the wheel all put back together there, and uh, I was kind of stumped on, you know, what this grease, you know, this is uh, apparently for a grease fitting a tube, and the reason I say that is because over here on this wheel, right there, you can see, well, maybe you can, maybe you can't, with the way the, the light is, there's a grease fitting on a little tube that goes down. That indention is... It kind of makes a notch in the back of the hub where this one's got the circle right in the center of the hub. They must use this wheel for different implements and stuff because I got online and kind of miraculously John Deere still has parts diagrams and parts lists for this plow. I was shocked. So I get online, I looked up John Deere and the mystery was solved. The cap that goes on here has a grease fitting right in the center of it, which would grease this whole that whole assembly. So, uh, missing the cap, uh, I was able to rob a uh, collar, that locking collar, I don't know what you call it. Uh, robbed the collar and pin off of that parts plow over there. I made that big, fat, thick washer to fit. Um, it's got to be just so, so that it captures... Um, there's, there's actually two shafts that that is holding on. Um, I don't know how to explain it. But anyhow, so I made the washer, and now I just need a cap to cover everything up. Um, I'm going to have to round up a cap. Now, Tyler, the plow guy, sells parts, and I bought parts from him before. Uh, called and left him a message. Hopefully, he'll call me back soon. And I'm hoping that I can get uh, that cap and that one over there since I cracked it. And I may even get lucky and maybe he's got these springs in stock. I don't know. Uh, I may just end up having to 
source them at the hardware store or something but i definitely need to replace those springs because they're very weak other than that this thing is uh just about mechanically done i'll catch you guys up here after i get some parts in it may be a while all right well there's a number 51 plow it's been months since i've messed with this thing the uh, springs came in a long time ago i ordered that spring and this little spring um, that little spring must go inside that hub it's been so long that i don't remember that little spring at all it's got to be inside there though uh, this cap i can't remember where i got this i bought this off some old some old boy i think he was in washington again guys it's been months i'm sorry i forgot who i got that from uh, i got the spring kit from tyler buckheit and i called him about that cap too and he didn't have one he said those are uh, about rare as hen's teeth uh he gave me a number from a fella and i called that old boy and he had one but it was cracked um so that's the only only one i could find so i was glad to get what i could get i could probably get somebody to weld that up for me or i could attempt to weld it myself but i'm not gonna so um jb weld to do good for now if that don't hold for looks then uh I, i'll pay somebody to weld it for me but i'm no good at cast iron so okay well i figured it had to be in there and that's where it was so there's the new spring uh there's the new spring up there and i'm gonna get this thing put back together and i think we're gonna get some paint on it all right well you can see the uh green paint's done the yellow's not uh i just did the green today we're getting toward the end of october and it's getting pretty cold during the night i think we're getting down in the 30s and uh, during the day today it warmed up to it was in the mid 50s when i started and i think it got all the way up to about 70 this afternoon so i sprayed it in early afternoon uh you're not supposed to spray in less than i think 52 degrees is what it says on the rust-oleum can uh, so anyhow it was about 55 when i started and it warmed up uh, through the day i left it set out in the sun and uh, it's it's pretty good now so I backed it in here into the garage to make sure that it doesn't cure funny or anything overnight when it gets cold again. I'm going to leave it set for a couple days and uh, let this paint cure up for a couple days before I jack it up and then take I'll take the wheels and hubcaps off and paint them yellow off the thing rather than trying to mask around the hub and stuff. It'd be a real pain in the ass. Uh, I went ahead and painted the tail wheel green and it, it should be yellow but i just i was kind of curious what it looked like green uh it don't look bad but i'll probably go ahead and paint it yellow anyhow i uh, painted the whole plow and everything i doubt this thing will ever see dirt again so you know i was kind of up in a in a i don't know i was contemplating just painting it like a dull black or scouring it with a grinder or something i said to hell with it i'll just paint it green i painted the coulter too um what i did for paint with this thing is uh Rust-Oleum makes a John Deere green. They make a John Deere yellow. I think they make an Oliver, and they might make an International. They make a handful of different tractor colors. And I've used this stuff. You can buy it in gallons, which this is. You can buy it in quarts or aerosol spray cans. This either came from one of three places. I can't remember. It either come from Tractor Supply, Home Depot, or Lowe's. So if you're looking for it, check there. Um, they don't all carry the you know the same size jugs i think i think lowe's carries the aerosol cans and they're this they're the cheapest place you can find them this i think maybe come from tractor supply and i think home depot is the one that carries the quartz so anyhow shop around um but according to rustoleum customer support or tech support whatever you want to call them um i had to call a couple of years ago because they quit putting the instructions for thinning to spray on the back of their can. They used to tell you what you could mix it up with and how to mix it and everything, but they don't on the instructions anymore. So a couple of years ago, I called and talked to them. They said to use acetone to thin with because acetone is in the paint already. So you're just making it more diluted um, and not to use mineral spirits for whatever reason. Now, I know some guys do use mineral spirits and they get pretty good results. So maybe it's not that big a deal, but that's tech support recommends acetone um, and they the lady told me that you could go as thin as three to one you know three parts paint to one part uh, acetone i do four to one and i get pretty good results and i've painted 
a handful of different projects with uh, Rust-Oleum paints and I don't have any trouble at them. The greens, I mean, hell, I paint everything with Rust-Oleum paint. Matter of fact, I painted that boat. That's aluminum. Um, let's go over and look at that. That's aluminum. This is aluminum. This is wood. And this is steel. And I don't have any trouble out of that. The trailer that it's on, this was a Rust-Oleum paint. And I, I sprayed all this stuff with that gun. This is a Harbor Freight. Cheap little gun. 14 or 15 bucks. I've had... I've had a handful of other cheap little guns. I've never had a high dollar spray gun, but I've had a handful of different ones, and this is a good little gun. Uh, I'm really happy with it. I've probably done, I don't know, six or eight different projects in the year or two that I've had it, and I got no complaints. And it's so cheap that a guy could, I've heard of guys that they'll just buy it, use it for a project or two, when it starts sticking, they don't feel like cleaning it, they just throw them away and go buy a new one. So, um, so that's a good little gun. Now, as far as the... Uh, dryer and everything like that i don't have a dryer on my uh, air compressor you can put you can buy filters and stuff matter of fact i've i bought filters uh, some spray gun filters from harbor freight years ago on a project i was doing and uh, it didn't seem like it made any difference at all so i don't even use them anymore um i use uh well i've got an extension another line that i hook onto the end of that one but it's that flex hose i don't have any dryer no filter nothing of course the you know the tank accumulates water that i kind of bleed out every couple of months but i ain't painting lamborghinis either but for what i paint tractors and lawnmowers and you know oddball stuff i'm real happy with with how that works so you know rust oleum paint mix four to one four parts of paint to one part acetone i mix it up in uh, the little ratio cups that i get from walmart because they're only like a buck at walmart i think uh, use them for a project and then I throw them away. Let's see. I think this is this is a Walmart cup here So they're real easy to use and when I say four to one you can just look at the uh, you know It's got graphs on the side of the thing. So like I was mixing up six units of four to one So I poured it in poured in the paint till it got to number six and then I topped it off with acetone till it got to this number six so these are like a dollar at Walmart, I think and the paint section so use them and then throw them away it's cheap all right guys well i'm gonna paint this thing uh, i'm gonna pull them wheels off here in a few days paint them yellow uh i gotta get some rope i probably get some old hemp rope for the uh trip mechanism and uh i'll show you what it looks like when we're all done all right well here we are uh out in the barn and it occurred to me uh today that i never did finish up the video on this plow i uh, finished it up a few weeks ago it's been sitting out here uh it was kind of in the way in the shop i've got it parked out here that's a number 52 two bottom plow this is uh the, of course a number 51 single bottom plow um that 52 i worked on it in another video uh it mechanically is uh i wouldn't call it restored you might you might call it restored um, it mechanically it's very functional I went through the clutch and uh, rebuilt it and uh, went through the rest of the machine and made sure everything's functioning properly so uh, a lot of guys would call it restored hell a lot of guys just paint shit don't work on it at all and call it restored so I did everything but paint that one um, anyhow that's in another video this is the 51 we've been working on i did not put a rope on the thing i bought rope stuck it in the cabinet and i never put it on there so i don't know if i ever will i'll be honest with you guys i really lost a lot of interest in this project as it went along so um this thing may end up being for sale here pretty soon uh, it's a good looking plow damn good looking uh the yellow paint turned out real nice it accents the green real well the paint job on it looks awesome of course it's got new springs in the uh, clutch uh, we worked on, you know, all that other stuff that we worked on. The thing is functional. Uh, a guy could stick it in the ground, you know, and, and turn some dirt. So, uh, I probably end up selling this thing. I probably ought to just go ahead and get rid of this one, too. Um, but anyhow, I painted the wheels off of it. Pulled the wheels and hubcaps off. Uh, the tail wheel, I painted it while it was on the machine. I'll climb around here. These things are just in the way. They're never going to get used. I'm climbing around them. I'm going to fall, trip and fall and hurt myself. And then I'm really going to regret having them around. Uh, but the tail wheel, I didn't paint this, uh, oh, what you call it, that hub portion. I know a lot of them get painted. Um, 
but I just painted it while it was on the on the machine here. I masked off the green and then I painted yellow out here. Try to stay away from uh, you know making too big a mess. Anyhow, um, that's pretty much it on this one, guys. Uh, if you're uh, if I helped you with this video, click that thumbs up button. Uh, if you found it interesting or if I can uh, help you any more with any questions or comments you might have, leave them down below. I'd be glad to answer any questions that I can. And uh, until the next video, keep on tankering.